Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. 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 America, to the Republic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Just a moment. It's fine. Yeah. All the board of selectmen signed these. Yeah. Like Even if it just said one line of chairman. As, as is our custom, the first order of business is public comments. Any public comments this evening from anybody? No? Okay. We'll keep moving. Is uh, one no, sir. I'm not even surprised. Um, the second item on the agenda is um, passing the minutes. We have two sets. Actually, there's three sets. Uh, the first set, um, move to accept and approve the minutes of July 21st, 2015, as shown. I have a second. I'll second. Uh, I got a quick comment. Comments. Yeah. Um, it, I had a question for Will Doyle that doesn't get reflected, and there was the same question that was asked of all the other candidates, too. Basically, it was what preparation did he do to get himself ready for this position? It's, it just it's Actually, blank. I added that. Oh, you did. Okay, good. And then the uh, the other thing was under the special permit line, same minutes, um, paintball people, rod and gun. I asked about liability insurance, and it has DG. And then afterwards is the comment being made by the representative from the paintball place, rather than my question of do you have liability insurance it, it reflects the answer but it doesn't reflect the question so it's a little confusing it looks like I'm the one talking about what they did in Ashland or someplace um, that's, those are my comments, but they're minor just wanted to point them out any comments Terrence? No. No. so those We'll correct those. <coughs> All in favor of accepting the minutes, the changes? Five. Okay, uh, next up is the move to accept and approve the minutes of July 29th, 2015, as shown. A second. Second. Terrence. Any comments on the minutes of July 29th? No comments. Okay. All those in favor of accepting those minutes? Abstain. 4 0 1 abstention. Okay. Um, next minutes. Move to accept and approve the minutes of August 4th, 2015, as shown. Do we have a second? Second. Jason. Jason gets Jason. it. Okay. Any comments on the min minutes of August 4th? Quick comment. Time was a little bit incorrect on the uh, trash pickup. It was listed as 6.30 p.m. when the complaint <coughs> was for 6.30 a.m. <coughs> All right. I didn't see them near the bridge. Sorry. I withdraw my comment then. Okay. So. All right. All in favor of accepting those minutes? That's fine. And item number three, correspondence item A through M. Move to accept and approve the list of correspondences as shown A through M. A second. Second. Any comments? Okay, no comments. All those in favor of accepting the correspondence? <coughs> Next item four is the consent agenda. And that is a motion to approve the consent items as shown. A second. Second. Sorry. 
parents. Any comments on the consent agenda? No. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda? Five of us. Okay. Number five. We have a request for a special one-day permit at Crow Park for a softball game fundraiser between the Maynard Police and the Maynard Fire Department on September 12th, 2015. I was just told to come in. <laughs> 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 we're going to grill you naturally. <laughs> so you can just tell us what we're doing July, uh, September 12th, and then we'll... Police Department and Fire Department are having a charity softball game to benefit the Boys and Girls Club in Maynard. Um, the game starts at 11 o'clock. I believe it goes, sh shouldn't be more than four hours or so. Um, I think Flo's Catering is going to do like barbecue food up there. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the Boys Club, uh, Wendy at the Boys Club, she's working on um, getting like a bouncy house for the kids, for the younger ones. Um, maybe the little train thing out in the parking lot. Uh, but it should be a good, good time. Um, I don't anticipate any issues. Um, and it, like I said, all the, all the proceeds, we'll probably do a raffle, like a 50-50 or something there, and all the proceeds are going to the boys club. Okay. Any questions, concerns? Anybody? This, this is the first one I read? This is the first? First, first hopefully annual. If, oh, hopefully, see how it goes, and maybe it's an annual thing? Yes, yeah, yes. Right. No, thank you for, for volunteering to actually do it. It's always good to have some charity... Uh, Definitely. in town and have fun anybody else david if they ever want to do a basketball thing we've got five of <coughs> us right so yeah we see us running <laughs> <laughs> all right no, i have no comments okay so i guess nobody else anyone else any comments or questions okay so. move to accept and approve the request for a special one day permit at crow park for a fundraiser to support the Assabet Valley Boys and Girls Club softball game between the Maynard Police and the Maynard Fire Department on September 12, 2015. Second. Second. Okay. Any further comments? Yeah. Mr. Chair, just um, to follow up, just to Paul, um, approval on the uh, public f uh, food consumption piece, is that in process? Um, I got to talk to Sean Kiley. I okay. think he was working on I that. Just, yeah, I just want you guys to be aware that this is only approval of the um, the actual park. facility. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, I mean, it is a public event, and um, they, they would need a temporary food permit for that day. Okay. That's all. Is it time? You got to be quick, right? What's that? Yeah, they, 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 they got to be. They should be fine. Go quick. Yeah, it, it won't be a problem. I mean, it's a, it's. A, licensed facility and but if the, because there it's a uh, outside of the normal um, operating venues uh, is a temporary food so it'd be but the agent can approve it it doesn't need to go to the board so, so, so we don't need to approve that no okay we can't approve it all right any more comments yes sir mr chairman i'm wondering if we're having a fundraiser for a softball game between the police and fire department and i'm wondering requesting also permit to sell the old sneaky beer and booze. Seems that most people can't run a fundraiser without selling beer or wine or whatever. I don't see any mention of that here. We're not it's looking to sell alcohol. Do no. I no. do not see the any mention of that in the um, paperwork we got or anywhere else. Soda and water. Yeah, no, no well, liquor. <coughs> There's no mention of it here. Okay. Any further comments from anybody? The answer for everything when you're looking for money. Sell booze. Always sells. It's never, there's never a recession in the liquor business. Okay. Um, all those in favor of, it, of this request? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. See you. Very much. Good evening. Any updates on 129 Parker Street, Kevin? 
Um, so since our last meeting, the uh, developer's attorney has actually been on vacation um, until today. So at this point, Attorney Witten has uh, sent him mm -hmm. over some um, bylaw um, changes, proposals that were discussed. Uh, he has those, but we haven't had any um, communication with uh, the developer or their attorney because of vacation schedules. Um, one thing I'd like to ask the board tonight um, is there's a motion before you uh, with regards to um, requiring the developer to submit payment for initial funds for the 53G account um, to cover the costs that are associated with uh, uh, legal fees, engineering costs, et cetera, for the uh, project. Now that there's an actual project before us, um, utilizing the 53G account will put the, uh, the cost that's bid for the project onto the developer. So um, I'd ask that the board uh, make that motion so we can get that process moving. Okay. Anybody need any explanation as to what 53G is? <coughs> okay. So we move with the motion. Motion move that the Board of Selectmen require and request the payment of initial funds in the amount of $20,000 pursuant to GLC 44S 53G for the completion of peer review and related consulting activities for the project known as 129 Parker's fee, Parker Street. Said fees to be for, at this point in time, legal services for the work of Huggins and Witten, LLC as Special Town Council. The board reserves the right to require and request additional funds pursuant to GLC 44S53G for engineering and legal services as well as for additional consulting services related to the 129 Parker Street project should the need arise. We have a second. Second. Okay. Any comments from the board? No. Okay. No comments. All in favor of Garrison? So, um, with the receipt of those funds, just so the board's aware, there is a, uh, a slight project balance that still exists from the <coughs> prior submittal from the developer, about a little over $6,000. That's currently in the 53G. So, just so you're aware, that there is some additional money beyond that um, 20,000 that'll be requested at this time. That's all. Okay. That's from the previous go. Yeah, it's just left over from Got um, the prior <coughs> submittal. Okay. Looks like we have two minutes. Till 7:15, so we'll wait two minutes, and then we'll start the uh, public hearing. This clock is a little fast. It is. Strong batteries. Yeah, these. Two more pass up. To second. Okay, so it's 7.15, we will open the public hearing in regards to the liquor license for 5 Maynard LLC, doing business as Battle Road Brew Pub. Comments from you guys. Applicants. Comments from the applicants. Hi, I'm uh, Dan DiPietro, I'm Corporate Counsel for 5 Maynard LLC, I'm representing the entity today. Uh, Chairman? Yes, sir. Point of order, please. Yes, sir. Uh, when I saw the legal ad, I had some question as to the address that applied to Clark Tower Place, legal address. I checked with the local postal service, and it would appear that it is a legal address because the postal service, much to my surprise, delivered this to every building in that park which is rather unusual because they tried to unload work rather than create it. But they found out back, back <coughs> a few years ago that it was better to do that than have a fail stop or whatever they call it. But my one concern is that 
you have a map with a circle on it from the, I presume, the petitioner or the board of uh, assessors. Board of assessors. Which means that everything within that area is technically in a button. And if you look at the abutters list, We have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 6, 8, 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17 listed abutters. Okay? Okay. You don't have abutters basically listed for a major portion of Thompson Street, Henry Street, Front Street, Main Street, Walnut Street, and you also, within the area of the, the jurisdiction of what now is called the Mill at Main, you have a, an edu what is classified as an educational facility in there. And if you look at the application for the liquor license, you will find that it specifically mentions schools, churches within 500 feet. Just tell me how many. Mr. Chair, just a point of order. If we could uh, open the meeting, um, probably reading the legal notice. Because I don't, I don't have any problem with the location of, of what these gentlemen are trying to do. In fact, I think it would be quite nice to have them. But at least let's do it properly because we seem to be having a lot of problems with liquor issues in this town that we shouldn't really have to have. Thank you. Okay. I'll read the legal, legal uh, <coughs> notice to open the meeting. Yeah. Okay. We, Here you go. We opened it. She took the legal notice. No. Here you go. I have, I have it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have the I have the legal notes right here. <coughs> okay. Notice is hereby given in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 138, as amended that a public hearing will be held on Tuesday, August 18th at 7.15 p.m. in the Michael J. Giannotis Meeting Room, number 201, at the Maynard Town Building, on the application for a new license on premise for all alcohol as a common Victoria license for five Maynard LLC, DBA, Battle Road Brew Pub, Five Clock Tower Place, Maynard, Mass. A copy of the application is on file in the Office of the Selectman. Gentlemen. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, my name is Dan DiPietro. I'm a corporate counsel for Five Maynard LLC, uh, here to help assist with any uh, legal questions or matters. Uh, to my left is Chris <coughs> Steffens. Uh, Mr. Steffens is the managing partner of Five Maynard LLC um, and can speak to the general business matters, business structure, et cetera. What's your first name? I didn't hear it. Chris, Chris Steffens. Chris Steffens, okay. That should be easy. <laughs> okay, Mr. Steffens. Comments? Any comments from you this evening? Or? Um, if you... Um, Unless you... You don't have to make any. No, nope. if you have any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. If okay, not, I'm, I'm sure we'll have questions, so... Okay. If, if you don't have any questions or comments no. to start, we will um, proceed with questions from the, from the um, public. Any comments from the public in regards to this item? item? Okay, have we been done? Um, Jason, questions? Um... It's usually customary. Could you give us just a, a rundown of, actually, I guess in this case, we kind of know what's going on, but if you could give us an update on what you guys are doing over there right now. Well, we've, uh, the space has been, uh, the demise in the space now, they've demoed what was there previous. So right now we are in the process of upfitting it for um, the brew pub. Brewing equipment has been ordered. It's somewhere between here and China. That's where it is on a boat. So that's where it comes from. So that's where we're at. Okay. And Mr. Seven, are you, are you set to be the, I apologize, I'm just looking through real quick here. Uh, 
Are you going to be the manager on record? No, the manager will be Ashley Hansen. She's on vacation this week. Okay. Um, she's going to be the manager for the application. Once we get closer to it, we will appoint a general manager who will come before the board and be approved by the board itself. Proper paperwork, quarries, background checks, everything. Okay, so she's going to be she, effectively your manager during the build out. Yes, yeah, she she's our operations director for the company. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's it for right now. Okay. David. Yeah, quick comment. Um, first off, um, I don't know if you've heard, but there's a huge buzz about your operation and business coming to Maynard. There's a lot of excitement Thank and a you. lot of enthusiasm. Um, and people in the community that I've spoken with are very excited about the opportunity and I'm hoping that's a long uh, you know, and, and good you know, relationship Same between here. the town and, and the business. So I'm looking <coughs> forward to that. Um, the other point I wanted to make is the map that's in here, I had envisioned, first off, the reason I, th I think I, th all of us probably have very few questions is there was another presentation made months ago Well, some of us were here, most of us were here, um, and very, very con you know, comprehensive basically with the plans and everything else. So I think I, I have a full grasp as to what the plan is and how it's going to operate and things like that. But as I look at this map, it looks smaller than what I anticipated, the map that's in there. and The floor <coughs> plan? Um, just one floor, but I can't get a grasp of how big the area is. Okay, yeah, so it is going to be on the first floor. Um, it's going to be, right, I think, right around 11,000 square feet. I see. The, 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 like, it looks like the biggest part of the whole uh, operation is the brewing operation. It says brewing operation on the map. Uh, which almost looks bigger than the dining and open well, seating. We well, have the kitchen also back there. Yeah. Storage. That all plays into that also. Um, all deliveries will come through the loading dock, which is, if you're looking at the plan, located on the far side, on the back side of the staircase. So that's what encompasses most of that. Um, I mean, as, I I'm, as I'm looking at this, uh, uh, the brewing operations is on the left-hand side of my map, just so we're sort of coordinated the right way. Okay, so if I'm looking at it from... And at the top of my map is, looks like a couple of bathrooms okay. and a staircase yes. on the left. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so is that top area dining? Is that exterior? Is that inside? How is... Uh, okay, well, what you want to do is you want to flip it to look for the entrance. So I would flip to have this, the staircase to your right. If you're turning around. I don't know if I can do that, but... <laughs> okay. So if you did that... The, if the, I did that, though, So okay. the parking lot would be, if you're looking at staircases to the right, yeah. you're going to entrance where it looks like two circles with X's on it. Yep. That'll be walking in from the parking lot. That's the glass facade. Got it. This is five clock tower. Then there's a vestibule in the middle here, and then the outline is all, it's gonna be all glass, which is gonna highlight that area. So again, this is gonna be general for people to access the rest of the building, uh, floors two through five. I see, okay. So if you really actually look at it, there's a lot more dining and bar, because if you go down and you go to the right, that's a, it comes as a huge area. Um, it, it just maybe looks bigger because it's more of a rectangle, mm -hmm. but the square foot is actually more in the dining and bar area. Um, and I can give you actual dimensions. I can. That's that's them. okay. The other question I have is there was some talk at the outset, at least during the preliminary conversation, about there being outdoor seating. Is that currently in part of this plan at all? That is that is not on this plan, but there will be. Um, if I'm correct, Mill and Main is looking to do a a large renovation, which is going to encompass part of the water, like a deck, and yep. I, I, don't quote me on that. I understand. But for us here, on the outside here, we will have an exterior beer garden. Um, we will, I can provide you those plans. I can drop them off to Becky in the next couple of days. It will That's show the, the whole outlay with the parking lot. They're working on that now, as they're doing the construction, to get the, the adequate number of spaces and design that area. That's coming from ownership. Okay. That's it for now.
Mr. Chair, um, if I could, just while we're on the topic of um, space layout, is the whole house group offices, the operator, their offices are going to be on the second floor? On, on the second floor. Of this space as well? Yeah, what, <clears throat> what it would be is if you're sort of, if you're looking at it on the left side, where it looks like a doorway going down a hallway, we'll be right on top of that, and then just come around to your right, it will, we'll be looking right down onto that. Okay, yeah, so they'll be on-site on management site, yes. up, up top as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Um, how you doing, Chris? Nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you too. Very excited about this project. A lot of buzz, as David said before. Uh, this kind of leads up to my next question. When do you guys think you might be ready to go, ready to open, or plan on opening? Good question. Um, the way it looks right now is um, ownership is working on the space. They are uh, working to demise it and work out their logistics on square footage of who's going in the back and just work out the egress issues. Um, all the equipment has been ordered. We're at the mercy of the di of the distributors. Hopefully they told, we we should hopefully get it mid-October, knock on wood, if, we're, if, if everything's perfect. Once we get it, we just put it in. We will start the rest of the construction as once we, the space is turned over to us. You know, the best I can tell you is as early as possible. I can give you guys a more definitive date in the next couple of weeks. Um, again, we want to be open when we can. Us not being open, we can't generate any revenue. So, uh, my understanding is you needed this license and another license from the state. Is that accurate? It's for your brewing operation. Yeah, that's a completely separate license for brewing and it being to serve th through the brewery, if I'm correct, and I'm, don't quote me on it, but to be able to brew and serve within the premises, it's either a section 12 or a 19B, which provides us able to do that, instead of having to go outside to a distributor and come back in. So we can brew fresh, serve it right to the customers, like that. Sure. Uh, good evening. Thanks for coming. I'm also very excited. I think the, the sentiments being echoed by everybody Thank you. Uh, on the board here. So looking forward to the opening. Um, I know you want to open as soon as possible to start making money, of course. A uh, quick question on, I would like to see the plans actually, if you would drop them off to Becky sure. if you could. I would like to see more. It would be good. Um, my question is around hiring. Are you guys already looking to start hiring now? Have you put the word out? I mean, I'm talking about chefs and you know cooks and the staff so that you know, when things do arrive, you actually have a pool of resources to pull from so you can actually open up. Well, what we normally do for all our restaurants, um, for, for example, we're opening Flank in, Walth in Waltham right now at the Market Basket. We're slated to open that hopefully mid-October. We've already begun the hiring process. So we usually look at once we get a date, we target two to three months out. We'll put a general manager in place. He'll start the hiring process. We have, uh, we have our executive chefs. We have Ashley Hanson, who's our operation director. We handle front of the house. So it's an extensive process they do, but we will put it out two to three months before, interviewing candidates, and then we bring it along like that. And then once we have a target date, we sort of do a dry run for the first month, you know, close doors, get the staff up to par, make sure they know all the tip certification, all the serve safe certification. You know, we run the restaurant to make sure everything's operational, and then we open up. So it's very, it is very extensive. Uh, and to my, my other question, um, sort of near the first one is, do you actually look to hire local as well when you put a new establishment in place? Or you sit and, do you just do a, you know, from wherever? Always, we always look to source local first, whether it's, you know, produce for the kitchen, staff. It's always better to hire local. Me and my, my partner, Greg, who um, some of you might have met, we feel very strongly about that. It's a better presence. We don't want to bring some guy in from, you know, I don't know, two states over to work for us. You know, if but it really does, the best guy, yeah, no. best woman. Well, I mean, it, I mean, it does come down to having the best people there, but we do rather source locally than anything. That's our first call. Final question: Regardless of what Mill and Maine does with an outdoor deck, and mm -hmm. you can't control that, obviously, right. your plan is to have outdoor seating. Yes, right. that you is, have that an idea is, of how many. You're looking to accommodate outside? Or? I will have that in the plan for you. I'll have the architect scale it out for you. So when you when you see it, they'll have all your numbers there. Okay. Great. That's it. Thank you. Great. Thank so, you. Uh, Chris, if I may, uh, to follow up on the outdoor seating, do you anticipate having outdoor entertainment 
like a band area? And if so, would that require a separate, I guess this question is more to Kevin, would that require a separate license being an yeah. outdoor yep, so go down regular direction. entertainment license yes. from us? Would be require two different entertainment yeah. type licenses? Okay. Yes. <coughs> I'll need a common vic in the entertainment, right. but that will come closer right. to when you but the common vic, uh, I'm talking about a separate entertainment license separate on top of the entertainment license that we would give along with the common vic normally for any uh, type store. Right. So it would be a separate one entirely. Right. Okay. With, with restrictions. Yeah. That, that's, that may be put. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now my, my question is, I, I think you answered it in the response to Terrence, but um, I see here just 37 seats at the bar open seating and some other areas in, in outdoors and you know, rough guess as to what the uh, total capacity is going to be between indoor outdoor and everything you know on a, on a say what you anticipate to be a busy night how many patrons you expect if i could if i can give that on a plan tomorrow with a seat and diagram so you guys have it that's fine yeah i'd that's rather fine. do it that way so i don't say one and give you another okay I don't have any other questions. Does anyone else have any other questions or comments? No. Yes, sir. Some? Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> first question I have is, uh, do you anticipate starting the brewery at the same time as the pub, or are they independent as far as startup? No, they'd be the same. Same time. He said, he said time. they would be at the same time together. Okay. And uh, was there an answer for the entertainment thing? If he, they do have yeah, the answer from Kevin Sweet was that it would be an additional license. I understand that, but is there a desire on the part of the group up to do he so? Didn't, he didn't say whether there was a desire to do so or not. It would be great if he did. I don't, <laughs> think, he, I don't think he was asked. I think mean, Kevin was asked if we need a separate permit, but we did not ask if that's part of your plan. Is that part of your plan? We, we our part of our plan is to, in certain summer months, hopefully be able to do that outside and also have entertainment inside. Okay. So that is something that we would like to do. Okay. Any further comments? Chris, uh, one question. Sir, could you please identify yourself? I'm sorry. My name is Danny Kelsey. I'm 7 Front Street. I'm probably your closest neighbor uh, across the pond. Potentially, if you're your outdoor deck, it would be nice to have a hitching post for my canoe. <laughs> 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 I take it you are in favor of the project. I am in favor. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, I just ask a question specific to the um, loading dock. Is that construction happening? Because that seems to be pretty uh, key to the <coughs> whole project. Does that happen simultaneously? It's supposed to be. Um, they're in the process now of designing a loading dock that will be, um, which will be able to access the side here. Right. They've gone through a few snags. Ownership's working on it. Okay. So, Kevin, what I can do is. Um, we actually have a construction meeting on Friday. Okay. Um, two things, if you, you're more than welcome to come if you want, and it's right across the way, or I can just bring you the notes we have from it, right. whatever you'd like. Yeah, just curious, because it, it seems it seemed like that would need to be in place, I guess, prior to... Yeah, that's all That's all getting <coughs> done simultaneously with what they're doing in here. Sort of at the mercy of the... Yeah, because uh, yeah, we can't... Know. You know, they have to put, you know, trash bins in. they got to hide everything right. there. So they got a lot to do there, but they're... Okay. They've accepted bids now. They're just trying to figure out what's the proper way oh, to do it. Good. Thank you. That's it. Is anybody confused about who they are, who the owners are? Because I just want to make sure everyone knows the owners. When you continue to speak about the owners, you're speaking about Saracen. Saracen, Maine. yes, yes. Okay, just so everybody's aware. Yeah, Saracen. What do you mean by owners? The owners of Mill and Maine. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, do I need to read the entire motion again, or did we just, the legal motion or just the motion? Just the motion. Okay, so the motion is, move to accept and approve the request for this liquor license at 4 o'clock tower, 5, wait a minute, it says 4, five. is it 5? It's 5. At 5, okay, so we'll start over. You want us to move to 4? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's fine. I would delay the process quite a bit. He won't be able to park his canoe there. <laughs> All right. Motion to accept and approve the request for this liquor license at 5 Clock Tower Place for 5 Maynard LLC, doing business as Battle Road Brew Pub with manager Ashley Hansen. 
We have a second. Second. Okay, Mr. Donovan. And do we have any further comments? All those in favor of approving this license request? Congratulations, gentlemen, and good luck with yep. Battle Road Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to see you come up on your canoe, because I'm not going <laughs> <laughs> to. see him go home on the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to close. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah. Me? I just need to close the hearing. Oh. All right, so at this time, we will close the public hearing. The liquor license for 5 Maynard LLC. Second. Second. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Close. Okay. Mr. Chair, um, <coughs> we have uh, Linda Hanson, town uh, conservation agent, and uh, attorney Sarah Bellino, um, representing uh, the town of Blatman, Broski, and Mead and Tallerman, um, here to discuss the uh, rail trail easement. Um, process acceptances. Turn it over to uh, Sarah or Linda. Well, yeah, tonight is more of a formality to accept the easements that we have, uh, we've have signed for the um, permanent and temporary um, rail trail easements from property owners from the abutters. So what you have in front of you is, is the, the list of easements or the um, signature page for all the easements, the Board of Selectmen signature pages. Okay. So we have, uh, we'll have a continuation of this on Thursday night. We have three takings for um, uncooperative uh, butters, and uh, that will happen on Thursday night. Okay. Sarah, what's your last name? My name is Bellino. I, I know that, okay. All right. Okay, so. So you have in front of you the motions, I think, for right. all the, the, we have to take a separate motion for each easement. Right. And so. A lot of reading. <laughs> okay, so do you have anything you want to add before Absolutely. we start? No. So these, the ones that are presented to us tonight, the folks that that reside there have all accepted mm -hmm. the terms and everything else. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Willingly giving over easements for the purposes of both construction and in the ongoing use permanent. of the rail trail. Yeah. Okay. Some are temporary, some are permanent, but these are all uh, willingly given. It's voluntary. Correct. Okay. So I guess all that's left is to read them and go through them. Anything, Kevin, comments for you? Any? No? Nothing. Uh, no. No additional comments. Um, Sarah, touch base from, with okay. regards to the takings for Thursday. Um, other than that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Just the next step in the process then. All right. We'll start with the first one. The motion is, I hereby move pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27, 2014 Special Annual Town Meeting to accept the temporary and permanent easements from AS Clock Tower Owner LLC for the purpose of establishing the Aspit River Rail Trail through Maynard. Yeah, cool. Any second? I'll second. I'm just asking for a point of order. Is Special Annual Town Meeting proper language? Should be special town. This should be special town. Special town. Yeah, sh the annual should be <coughs> taken out. It was. A, it was the same week, but. Okay, we'll cross. Oh, no, that annual. Was, no, that was special, special town meeting. Special. Special. It was special, special town yeah, meeting. Yeah, told that told that said, no, I said <laughs> special, and he said annual. It's yeah, it was special town meeting. It says special annual. It's just special town meeting. Oh, okay. So I will yeah. second with uh, friendly amendment. That'll be the same on all. Yeah, I've changed them all right now. Okay, so David had. Seconded the motion. Correct. Do we have any comments on the first motion? No comments. All in favor of accepting easement? Okay. Next up. We did five to nothing. Silent. <laughs> just put the hand up. Okay. Um, I hereby move, pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27, 2014, special town meeting to accept the temporary easements from Cheryl and John Minkowski for the purpose of establishing the Aspet River Rail Trail through Maynard. Further, the board moves to pay to Cheryl and John Minkowski $865 in accordance with the just compensation of the temporary easement areas established by William Lachance. Boston, Massachusetts, on July 11th, 2015. 
Do we have a second? Second. Timothy, any comments? Yeah, quick question. Um, just so that we don't get caught up in the legality and what I'm, I'm sure you reviewed this, but we don't have to have the addresses on there as part of the legal motion. Well, these are going to be recorded with the easements. Your acceptance will be recorded with the easement all on the same book and page. Okay, so then <coughs> it's, it's not necessary. Okay. Okay. Any further comments? All in favor? Okay. Next. Hereby move, pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27th, 2014 Special Town Meeting, to accept the temporary and permanent easements from Demopolis Family Trust for the purpose of establishing the Assabet River Rail Trail through Maynard. Further, the Board moves to pay Demopolis Family Trust $52,035 in accordance with the just compensation of the temporary and permanent easement areas established by William LeChance, Boston, Massachusetts, on July 15th, 2015. We have a second. Second. Any comments on this motion? All those in favor of the easement? Okay. Five. Me next. I hereby move, pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27, 2014 Special Town Meeting, to accept the temporary easement from 151 Main Street Parking, LLC, for the purpose of establishing the Aspen River Rail Trail through Maynard. Further, the Board moves to pay to 151 Main Street Parking, LLC, $5,200 in accordance with the just compensation of the temporary easement area prepared by William LeChance. Boston, Massachusetts, on July 15th, 2015. A second. We have a second. Second. Okay. Any comments on this one? All in favor? <coughs> I have one question, Kevin. Yes. Um, all but that one says um, established by William LeChance. That one says prepared by William LeChance. Make a difference? No. No. Okay, just check. On your next motion, is that for the Shaws? Uh, next yes. one is the Shaws. Yeah, we can eliminate. That's going to be a taking. So we don't, we don't have to do a motion on that skip one. That. Yeah, so skip we'll that. Skip that one. Okay. All right, the next motion. I hereby move pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27th, 2014 special town meeting to accept the temporary and permanent easements from Land Oil Realty Trust for the purpose of establishing the Assabet River Rail Trail through Maynard. Further, the board moves to pay to Land Oil Realty Trust $13,680 in accordance with the just compensation of the temporary and permanent easement areas established by William LeChance, Boston, Massachusetts on July 11th and 14th of 2015. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Donovan. Any comments? No comments. All in favor? Five. Zero. The next item. A motion. I hereby move pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27th, 2014 Special Town Meeting to accept the temporary and permanent easements from 42 Summer Street, LLC, for the purpose of establishing the Assabet River Rail Trail through Maynard. Further, the board moves to pay to 42 Summer Street, LLC, $1,745 in accordance with the just compensation of the temporary and permanent easement areas established by William LeChance, Boston, Massachusetts, on July 9th and 10th, 2015. A second. Second. Any comments on this motion? The only comment on this is that we will be preparing a, a second easement for the utility. Uh, one of the telephone or one of the utility poles <coughs> has to be moved on the on the property, so that will be part of the construction phase, not the design phase. So you'll see this one again probably for later on. So okay, additional cost involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, the the second easement to fall will be for utilities. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Any comments? No. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Okay. The 
next motion. I hereby move pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27th, 2014 Special Town Meeting to accept the temporary and permanent easements from the Knights of Columbus Building Association for the purpose of establishing the Assabet River Rail Trail through Maynard. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Chairman, is there a cost associated with that? <coughs> there is no cost associated with this motion. Okay. There was a donation. Okay. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Okay. Next few. Sorry. Two second. seconds. Okay. Oh, was there already a second? <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? Any questions? All right. All those in favor? This. Is five again. Okay. Next motion. I hereby move pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27th, 2014 Special Town Meeting to accept the temporary and permanent easements from. Damco LLC for the purpose of establishing the Aspen River Rail Trail through Maynard. Second. Tim, there is no financial aspect to this one either. Any comments? No. All those in favor? <coughs> okay. The next, I hereby move pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27th, 2014 Special Town Meeting to accept the temporary and permanent easements from Distinctive Acton Homes, Inc. for the purpose of establishing the Aspen River Rail Trail through Maynard. And second. Second. Any comments? No comments. All in favor? Okay. And finally, I hereby move pursuant to Article 5 of the October 27th, 2014 Special Town Meeting to accept the temporary and permanent easements from Town of Maynard for the purpose of establishing the Aspen River Rail Trail through Maynard. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. David. Well, you guys can toss a coin. David Cowell. All right. Any comments on this one? A quick, com quick comment on this one. Kevin. What are the parcels that we're actually donating as a town to this? Where are they located? Um, <coughs> is it the, yeah, I don't oh, okay. have them up. Do you know how many total we were talking about? What was that? You have it on this right there, right? I, I gave I you the thing. Yeah, the, the last page there has the, the map yep. on it. So we're doing an easement to ourselves, which seems kind of odd, but this is a federal highway project, so we have to dedicate the land for the purpose of the rail trail. So, so it's, it's a formality. It, it, could be do, it could have been done as a land oh, dedication okay. also. It's just, it's just a matter they don't want, once they use the funds, funding for yeah. a rail trail, they don't want it used for something there a, else. There was a town meeting article that authorized <coughs> us to, to do, do this. this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's nine. Okay. Nine total, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I apologize, I don't... I don't no, the what? lot parcel oh, number. But, uh, okay. yeah, this was, as, as uh, Selectman Gavin said, this was a, uh article that we recently had to uh, basically give uh, easements to ourselves at the okay. spring town meeting. I feel like we should ask some, some tough questions or something, but yeah, that's my I guess, guess not. <laughs> okay, so all in favor of this final motion? And we're done for now. We'll see you Thursday at 6.30. Thursday. You can be seeing Sarah. We, yes. You might have some more questions on Thursday. <laughs> okay. Rest up. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. You're welcome to keep the plans if you want. You want to take a look at them? No. Yeah, I do, actually, yeah. Yeah, you want to take a look at so all right, so the we'll assistant town administrator is going to have a color coded map for we'll me just keep for the next meeting. I, I, I need the signature. Uh, yeah, you can have the plan. So oh, okay. Like the He's a selective here. Yeah, yeah, can you just send yeah. us a copy of the, this one? Yeah, please. Just, okay. This is that page, so he knows what he's looking at. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Chris, did, did we have one for Shaw in there? The Shaw would be the taking. I understand that, but I just want to make sure that one wasn't signed. No, I'm good. They came in, Linda? No, they did not come in. Oh. Okay. Okay. Here you go. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next item up is setting a date, time, and place for the winter special town meeting. Yeah, so, Mr. Chair, we've... Um, the proposal that you have before you is uh, to look to do a winter um, special town meeting. As as you 
probably um, recall with the revision of the uh, <coughs> the new charter requirement for special town meeting um, timeline it, it adds an additional um, 15 days than what it was prior um, so it moved from 30 to 45 uh, which required um, which put us in a position where even less time to do things um, there's a few articles that are anticipated um, that were that will require some public hearings and uh, in order to to get through um, the recommendation again is is uh, to hold a uh, winter um, town meeting for January 11th that so we can uh, have the proper time to uh, prepare and have public hearings for necessary articles um, that otherwise we, we wouldn't um, you know it wouldn't be beneficial um, to have a, a fall meeting for um, you know at, at this point so um, that's that's where we're at with recommendation you have a proposed uh, <coughs> timeline of what that would mean what that would look like as far as when uh, deadline for warrant article submissions um, which would put us into uh, the second week of November November 17th with a deadline for citizen petitions on um, November 24th um, which then puts us uh, you can see in the timeline with uh, warrants to be printed and, and uh, published etc with uh, requirements for publishing and, okay. and uh, available availability so um, I know uh, the chair and I have discussed uh, the potential need for this. Some of the other items that we're working on, in addition to um, some possible uh, NBOD uh, zoning amendments, things like that, um, we're also looking at trying to move forward on some uh, accepted streets. And if we do some of the accepted street work, it's going to require us to have uh, some public hearings as well. And just giving the uh, hearing notice um, timelines, it's going to make it tough to do anything for the fall. Couple questions, Kevin, if I may. Sure. Um, did we reach out to the uh, moderator to make sure that, that date fit his schedule? So I don't know, Becky. Have you talked to specifically? Um, Dick said that there was dates in September, October that did not work for him. Um, I've confirmed with town council that it works um, with them, but I'm not sure. If, did you reach out to? No, Dick? Yeah. Yeah. To yeah, we haven't. Um, Just I wonder if it's worth our effort to uh, just wait till Thursday night on the approval of a date if the, if the moderator hasn't uh although we, we already have the agenda yeah he specifically provided dates that he he would not be in around but i didn't know that. <coughs> those are all in the, the october range yeah. the other question yeah. i have is is there any concern have we reached out to the schools are, were they looking to do anything in the fall we've or? reached out to uh the principal of middle school and um you mean specifically for the space or for articles no i'm talking about for funding of any sort that they were looking to yeah so the fall, um, that they're going to need for funding for things that they're planning on and expecting in the fall right the, the chair and i met with uh the school committee chair and the superintendent um they were interested in possibly trying to prepare a uh, a request letter for some possible use of uh free cash money for one-time expenses related to the fall or at that time of that meeting we were talking um timeline probably around a fall timeline I just think um, at this point so we haven't followed back up with them I, I would anticipate that they still would have the same interest and request it just may um, push them back out a, a couple months beyond you know where they were anticipating we didn't give them a definitive uh, yeah. date but we did tell them it probably be sometime in November okay my only concern would be that we not if they were expecting something uh, yeah I, not disrupt a program that that then couldn't be operational until no, it wasn't after. operational um, in the sense of it was kind of it was it wasn't a fund operational staffing or anything like that it was one-time um, sort of equipment money yeah um, yeah, I, I, yeah I, I don't know uh, they we still have yet to see the request so I don't know what exactly um, the chair and I you know tried to get an understanding of what that was and, and essentially what it was is just equipment needs for the follow school there's just that there's items that they need so we haven't seen any itemized list or you know it didn't sound like you know if they didn't get it that operation they were, they were gonna they weren't gonna close to down the schools school. yeah really? uh, but it's it definitely was not requested money for staffing levels which is why i recommended they they go the free cash route as opposed to increasing their uh, their operating budget bottom line number which will carry forward for you know right ever so <laughs> specifically yeah. it was you know 
It was uh, requested that it was one time use. Okay. So. Um, just to clarification, if we didn't have, if we had our meeting in around the normal time, which would be what, end of October, the yeah. school year would have already started without yeah, any additional yeah, funding. Sometimes, anyway. sometimes they have it funded in such a way that they have it through, you know, early October, mid October, and they pick up the money that they're anticipating to get. At an October town meeting, and it's you know I don't know if the, I don't know how they budget, so I don't know. You know. Can, can, quick, quick question: Just a, were we or were we not discussing just a little bit about, about a date for a winter special town meeting? Yes. Okay. Then we segmented to school budgetary items. Somewhere I lost something, so I'm not sure how this conversation so came about, what we're actually the, talking the about. The question right that Sergeant Gavin had was with regards to if the school has a request for a, a town meeting article for money. If that would put them off by not having a fall town meeting, if they so could by wait not having a fall meeting yeah. versus having one. Okay, that somehow I missed that connection. But if we were to have a fall meeting, you know, we we probably would be in a position we might have only a few articles, and it's it's not going to address the real needs that we that we have. So are we advocating not having a fall meeting. Correct. Okay, I don't did that because that's did it say that, that your, mean. your timeline says we'd be voting today on a meeting in November. That's why yeah, I was. It's kind of confusing. Yeah, that's why I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> The well, timelines had two different things on it. Um, uh, you must have a lot of documents. Although it said at the uh, end, it said Monday, January 11th. It's just the top hadn't been changed on the spreadsheet. I don't know. It's, it's 2015 fall. Yeah, both, that's, we got two spreadsheets. That was uh, the timelines, and both of them had the a uh, November date. Yeah, it was still the town meeting of January 11th. No, but the but what it said was board of selectmen <coughs> will vote to hold a special meeting on November the 8th or November the 2nd the first one says and then the second one says the Board of Selectmen will vote to hold a special town meeting on Monday November 2nd but then at the bottom it says special town meeting Monday January 11th so there was just a little it was a, there was a spreadsheet <coughs> that just hadn't been updated that's, yeah, that's that's just, okay I think three of us are looking for yeah, three yeah. sheets. And that's it's not the fall one; it's the winter one. Yeah. We have the the winter detail. Well, the, the winter we have to change the first line because it does say that's November second. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's okay. That yeah. What, yeah. Count, what matters will be the motion anyway. So right. The, so that we, we originally we we're discussing uh, having it the first um, Monday in November. I don't think it ever got updated. Trying to play. With, what we did was we played with the timeline to. Uh, see where that would put us on a special meeting with 45 days and it's just it's not going to be enough i would expect that if the schools had an emergency need we would make special arrangements to handle that anyway so but they didn't sound like they had anything like that when we met with them yeah i, mean, I still haven't well, seen the, the only thing is that to have a special town meeting requires what 45 day notice so <coughs> even if, if they had an emergency and they needed a town meeting it wouldn't be able to be held until at this point sometime. But Correct. to your point, they should have let us until, know. Until January 11th. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, so got any more questions about January 11th? And uh, there is no fall town meeting. There's going to be one, and it would be January 11th. So is any other questions, concerns about that? Yeah, the motion should also reflect the snow date. It does. Yeah. So we'll read it. Yep. So, the motion is move to accept and approve the special town meeting on January 11th, 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. in the auditorium at the Fowler School with a snow weather date of January 12th, 2016, same time and place. Do we have a second? Second. second. Okay. Late. We have a second. <coughs> Any further comments on the special town meeting of January 11th, 2016? All those in favor of scheduling the meeting, January 11th, 2016. Kevin, does that need a date cert, uh, place certain? Yeah. Part of that motion? Auditorium at the Fala School. <coughs> uh, said Fala School Auditorium, right? Yeah, I think that's okay. That's so I, I then I missed it. I apologize. <coughs> yeah. The actual public notice that, um, that's given is is much more. Um, I want to make sure we have. 
Okay. So, next up is a review of our um, goals and initiatives meeting of... Um, you vote on it? Yeah, um, so this is just a wrap up. Um, yeah, the, the board never actually kind of took a formal vote. We had the discussion for several enlightening hours and uh, came up with um, goals uh, and initiatives for 2016. At that time, um, Andrew actually had uh, offered um, to kind of pull that all together and create a header with some bullets. That's what you have before you. Um, <coughs> Under the the goals, so what we've done is kind of captured the um, sort of the four um, primary goals with uh, economic development, uh, communications, comprehensive facilities management, and then fiscal policies, um, with some more definitive uh, bulleted items with a, sort of a roadmap of, of uh, comprehensive with with the, with the goals themselves. So. Um, yeah, it's just a, a final up final. Uh, follow-up approval <coughs> of uh, FY16 goals so they can then be um, you know, properly uh, sent out and uh, vetted with department heads and, and let them know. We send the goals out? What's that? You send these, uh, this document out to be... Yeah, we, yeah, exactly. Provide letting um, everybody made aware of what the, uh, the board's goals are for the year and uh, yeah, we, we take into account a lot of those things within within staff uh, operations or leadership team meetings and things like that so the priorities I know we had an explanation given to us when we were at our meeting but it's oh, it's funny to see school dude on this thing can you just give me an, uh, an explanation yeah so school dude is a system that's been in place um, so the town has been using a, a, a similar still part of the dude systems um, called facility dude facility dude um, has been being used <coughs> by the DPW for the last couple of years um, that's used as a work order system um, as complaints things like that come in projects they go into a work order system they're then tracked they're issued to the foreman when when they're uh, completed the task gets closed out reviewed by uh, by Chris Okafer and then they're signed off on um, school do it is a system that was required when we um, when we built the high school it's essentially an operation and maintenance um, system that, that that we utilize. Everything that gets put in there, it'll, it'll tell um, O and M things like filter replacements, um, you know, belt replacements. All those types of things are populated into School Do It, as well as additional work or items that might be light bulb, you know, so it's like a might guidance be ballast system. replacements. Yeah, so um, they've had that system since uh, the, the construction of the school. Um, it just hasn't been being utilized. Now that um, Aaron, the facilities manager, is on board, um, he's gone through the training and is starting to roll that out. So the plan um, in this fiscal year is to utilize that. It'll be a much more of a comprehensive um, facilities uh, program for the schools, but it's specifically for the schools, the school do piece of it. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. And it ties in with the capital planning stuff. Yep. I think it's a funny name. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Odd name, I guess, more so. It is. So, I guess the one question I have about the um, the goals for 2016, the planning for it, et cetera, is um, what do we do? How do we, um, you know, judge ourselves going forward, like as we progress through the year, to make sure that we're um, meeting the goals that we to meet in on track to meet the goals that we haven't yet met you know um, so if you're talking about communications for example you know there's a, there's a um, the regulation updates the master plan and those type of things how do we you know what do we do we add an item to the agenda to you know so to, um, discuss the one thing that was goals or sh yeah I mean I, I open to you know, however the I don't want I don't want to get tied down every meeting talking about it, but Agreed. like once once a month do we add that into the agenda or something? Uh, One meeting a month or something? That frequently to be honest with you. However I mean, often last year um, I provided sort of a mid year memo that um, laid out accomplishments to date, um, if you will, related to those specific goals and I can share that to the whole board just to um, from our last year's three goals. But just kinda gave a, a mid year sort of status update. <coughs> um, and then kind of tying it all in at the end of the fiscal year. But uh, 
Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't think we need to necessarily. I mean, I think a lot of our agenda items and TA updates and economic development updates are, um, you know, every meeting we're talking about um, something that's goal related. Um, but I don't think we need to get bogged down into, you know, yeah, where I, are we at with this bullet item? I agree with Kevin's guidance. And, you know, the, the possibly a way to highlight it is if Kevin, if as you talk about various things as we go through the year that you can say, and you sure. know, and this is, uh, you know, this is good because it ties into our X goal, whatever it happens to be. And that way we are reminded of it. But That's I don't good. think there's a need for every meeting reminder. And I, I do think the sort of like, you know, a performance review, it's mid year, you get uh, yeah. sort of here's where we're at. Uh, so I, I'd I recommend the quarterly approach for us as a mid year. Mid year, a whole half a year, six months has slipped away. Things can happen. Calamities we couldn't even plan for could supersede things that are happening. In. And next thing you know, we're off track with all of our goals versus just some goals. So I'd be more apt. I, I don't want to bog things down from a monthly perspective, but I think a quarterly is more appropriate then because we may have to reassess goals what become more important, you know, to get to the mid year versus, you know, what happened mid year. That's, that's, that's my feeling. I don't know if anybody agrees, but that, that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree. I mean, uh, we went from nothing ever to last year, I mean, preparing a, uh, a kind of a mid-year. We've never made it a follow-up agenda item. Once they were set in July, you know, it was kind of uh, they reassessed them. You know, not that that's the right way, but uh, <coughs> yeah, I mean, we do it more frequently. Um, I mean, we certainly it should have be a collaborative. I mean, these aren't you know these aren't just the TA's goals. I mean, we certainly have them. So um, at any time, we can ask where we are with certain goals and, and, and get a, an update that way through you know the chair report or through any individual um, <coughs> board members you know report that we do every meeting. Um, one one of the things I'd like to kind of see if we could get it <coughs> is as we go down the four main categories, there are certain things within each that fall within, um, there's certain things that fall within your purview, there's certain things that fall under the um, planning board's, you know, um, responsibilities, certain things that fall under the heading of um, FinCom and those type of things. It'd be interesting to try and, um, at least from yours and Andrew's perspective, to kind of, you know, reprint this sheet and kind of in parentheses at the end of each item kind of put where you see that where you see that falling i mean obviously you know the fire station is the fire chiefs the coa is the coa some of the other things you know who's 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 um driving the bus who's responsible for instance sir, to protect white spawns at access um who's responsible for you know um town government and organization uh, regional transportation business recruitment just to see for our, you know, our own edification, basically, where who's handling those things as we go forward. We maybe we have a question. We know who to ask. So as not to tie up this, you know, the meetings here and tie you guys up. We could go right. Yeah, we can take a stab at it. I mean, looking at all of them, I, mean, I don't think any of them is a is a, you know, is one person responsibility. Certainly, you know, looking out for the. Uh, the entire uh, operations of the town. I mean, I think you can put the TA on every single one of them. Um, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Maybe some uh, more priority roles with uh, with individuals. I mean, we can we can take a look at that. Break that down. All right. Well, we can ask every single meeting and go through every single one of these bullets. <laughs> you might not be too popular, but you could. It's all right. <coughs> Well, we can wait six months to get an update on, on things. This is the way it's going to run. I, I, can, I can tell you right now. So, so if we wait till a mid-year review on stuff, we're, we're going we're gonna to miss out on opportunities for some of these goals. But if you want to wait till every meeting and out of the TA report to have the meetings drag out with people asking questions that, you know, so four or five of these goals may be the ones that I thought were very important. You know, the people told me they were very important, right? We, we wrote them down. And if I'm waiting a mid-year to see where we are, or I have to go out of my way to ask questions about stuff that's supposed to be a goal for the Board of Selectmen, then so be it. But I, don't, I, I can't see myself waiting six months or a mid-year report to get an update on the goals for the Board of Selectmen. So my colleagues may disagree, but then, then we'll just have to ask during the meetings. Okay. 
Okay. Well, we could vote and see who wants an update and what amount of time. I was thinking we could add it and handle it even less than that. So I'm certainly okay with quarterly if that's what we decide. And I'm, I'm less okay with six months out, but quarterly seems to make some sense to me anyway. I don't know if anybody else has a feeling about it one way or the other. Tim? No, I agree quarterly is a lot more timely <coughs> for us to jump on things instead of halfway through. I do agree with that. Jason, any thoughts about quarterly versus semi -in? Um I mean, effectively, if we want to tie up town staff giving you status reports, great. Uh, I think we have better things to do with our time and quite frankly we're responsible for all of these as the board of selectmen so i think you know whether it's tying up we think it's tying up meetings you know i think we're all individually responsible to follow up on these items um, whether it's six months or if you want something uh, official or we want to have people come in i mean certainly things can be spread out but I guess I, I, I'm okay with either. Uh, I would just caution us on how we are using the time of our staff. So I, I guess I'm confused about that, Jason. So I understand we all have a responsibility here, but so if, if it was up to the board of selectmen, we would go pursue all 16 of these bullets on the front page here ourselves and open up lines of communication with a bunch <coughs> of different people in town. I don't think that's feasible either. So I'm saying there has to be some sort of mechanism besides six months of just sharing information. Are we on track with this goal? No, we're not on track with this goal because this is the reason why. Well, this is what we're actually doing. I don't think that's an unreasonable ask for any department head. I don't think it's an unreasonable ask to the TA or the ATA. Um, if we need to do more work, that's fine, but I think we're handicapped by the fact that we have to do it in the format of a board versus individually, correct? The chairman's really the only person who can go out and, and ask for information on his own. So I'm just wondering how we're going to get on track with this if we're waiting a half a year to get formal information back. I certainly don't advocate having the staff do more work, but I'm assuming since these are the Board of Selectmen's goals that we all agreed upon in that meeting, that this is an important aspect for the town and we deserve to have information back on a regular basis. That's my only point. And waiting six months to me doesn't make any sense. So. That's fair. We'll, just, we'll okay. do uh, more frequent status updates. <coughs> Keeping in mind, this isn't an exhaustive bullet list either. True, and we could narrow it down after the first quarter. Go, and this is not feasible. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to get to these four things here. We've, <clears throat> to my point before, something came up that's really much more important that we weren't even planning for, and it's taken a a, a, a heck of a amount of time on the board and the staff in the town to actually handle those. So we're not going to get to those. But to find that out six months into the process, because we're going to be tasked with working off an agenda that the chairman and the town administrator set every meeting we have here and all the other things that come up during the meeting, things are going to slip by that we we don't necessarily need to have that happen. So if we start out quarterly and we find it's, it's worthless and we're not doing it, then I'll step back and say you guys are right. You can also foresee some of these jumping on the agenda themselves anyway. Yeah. So we don't need to go in debt. Well, that's Kevin's Maybe point earlier. Okay. okay. But okay real quick, what is school dude planning? Oh, uh, you weren't here for that. No. Just he stepped me. out. It's a it's a purchasing program, right? It's a work it's a order software. operation and maintenance system that the schools utilize for um, or will be using. They they Just currently own it, but school they haven't been. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Essentially, a maintenance is, um, so, software. All right. So let's see where we are. It's um, essentially it's. September now, so why don't we plan on talking about it like mid November? The, you know, the second the meeting in mid November, second meeting in November. It's kind of, you know, bring this list back up and, you know, even if we, um, you know, go through them as four items and just kind of tick off yeah. where we are what things have what you know what's transpired and i mean we're not going to get into every little one but i mean mill and main i think mill and main you know that that's going to be take care of itself 129 parker street that's on the agenda now that's going to take care of itself the affordable housing piece is going to be part of the parker street proposal 
for all intents and purposes unless someone else comes up with some sort of large plan that we don't know about so most of those things are going to be handled on their own so it lessens this list considerably when we have to consider it so let's go with November if that's okay that will will that satisfy you Terrence certainly yeah Anybody I'll else try to do it the first meeting in uh, okay. November if we could because uh, I think the 17th is going to be <coughs> much more exhaustive with uh, setting and closing the warrant okay. for the January 11th meeting. Does it have to okay. be in the format of at a meeting? Can it be a document that you send out to the five selectmen and the ATA or? Um, no. I mean, it, it was a, an agenda item with a, a detailed memo to the board in the past. You know, just a quick discussion. I don't think it's, it's going to be. I mean, we should put it as an agenda item. I mean, it shouldn't be anything that takes more time than the, the yeah. weekly TA report or anything else. Right. I wouldn't think. Okay. Any more questions about the goals? Is there anything that anybody sees that is not included in this document or anything that they don't recall being in this included? Nope. Okay. Thank so you, Andrew. Yeah, good job by Andrew, actually. Kept some <coughs> stuff on the wall. Yes. Despite all the challenges. Yeah. And I have the pitches to prove it. Oh, yes. Still okay. have those sheet, those big sheets? So we can check your work. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um, town administrator review acceptance. We haven't accepted it. I don't think... Has anybody else seen a copy of Bill Cranshaw's report? He sent it to all of us, didn't he? <coughs> sent it to all of us? Yes. So does anybody have any questions or concerns about the report as he submitted it? Because I'm actually okay with it. I read it and I'm fine with it. Okay. So, I mean... Have not been through this process before and heard one or seen one. Do we read this, Kevin? Do we just enter it into the record or how do we um, it the I just they captured a couple of highlights and read it in full um, and then just you, enter it into the record. I can read it in full. It's record. not that long. Sure. Can we read it in full? Sure thing. <coughs> okay, so this is the. Be part um, of the minutes, but Excuse me? It won't be part of the minutes. We'll capture it as. <coughs> I'll, take a, I'll take a couple <laughs> breaks if you want. The Becky's, paperwork. Becky's hand gets tired. We'll take a break. So, all right, the, um, this is the Town Administrator 2015 Performance Review, and it was um, conducted by Bill Cranshaw as the chair for FY 2015, correct? And it was um, based on information received by myself, Tim Egan, David Gavin, and Jason Creel as the selectmen under Chairman Cranshaw. And it says, the board members rated Town Administrator Kevin Sweet on personal characteristics, professionalism, communication, and public relations, board of selectmen, support relations, community leadership, organizational leadership, personnel management, financial management, town operations and infrastructure, and planning and organization. The board finds that Kevin met or exceeded job standards for each of the 10 categories. His pride of work, commitment to Maynard, and overall professionalism were recognized in his first year's review and continue to be particularly well regarded. Kevin is honest and effective. He consistently seeks both well-tried and inventive solutions to the town's challenges. Kevin's greatest strengths this year are found to be his professionalism and his skills with town operations and infrastructure. Kevin has a strong base of knowledge in regards to local government management and he is fully committed to educating himself and those around him through professional training. Kevin has made considerable progress towards improving the town's infrastructure and the board notes his particular success with overseeing the maintenance, repair, and use of town buildings. Kevin has built upon the initiatives he made during his first year and continues to try new and innovative methods of providing information to the residents of the town. The board is appreciative of his superior performance with media communications in keeping the citizenry informed of current issues in town government. Community leadership and personnel management are among Kevin's other strengths. The board is pleased of his successes maintaining effective communication with the business community and his continued efforts to enhance the town's position among other communities, state agencies, and municipal organizations. 
Kevin frequently exceeds job standards with regard to achieving the town's goals when negotiating labor contracts and maintaining positive employee relationships. General management of personnel and team building of professional staff has been very good, as is his skill in finding employee strengths and matching them to the town's needs. Other areas where Kevin exceeds job, exceeds job standards are his organizational leadership and supportive department heads and members of the organization, his financial management skills in providing future vision and direction, and his ability to create and facilitate an environment for long range and strategic planning. One area most in need of effort in, in, is ensuring that the Board of Selectmen are provided with timely and accurate information required for preparation for meetings. This issue was also cited in last year's review. There is no doubt that circumstances sometimes require seemingly last minute action by the Board, but there should be fewer of such instances. In addition, the Board notes some concerns with the timeliness and quality of analysis of policy issues and proposals that were requested by the Board. When this occurs, the cause most often appears to be due to a lack of responsiveness or detail by the town staff or committees responsible for the needed technical analysis. The Board of Selectmen's goals for 2015 were seniors, economic development, and communication. During periodic reviews during the year on the progress of those goals, the Board recognized the efforts of Kevin made with them. He helped the Board provide enhanced facilities and expanded services for seniors. He worked tire tirelessly in achieving progress in economic development, and he strove to improve communication. Kevin continues to grow in his position in Maynard, continues to reap, and Maynard continues to reap the rewards of that progress. He is enjoyable to work with, and the board looks forward to an exciting year of new opportunities and a continuation of the initi initiatives underway. We thank Kevin for all of his efforts and all he does for Maynard. Respectfully submitted on August 18, 2015, um, authored by William Cranshaw, Chair, FY2. 2015 and submitted by myself today on his behalf and the behalf of the rest of the selectmen. You're a good reader. <laughs> nice job, Kevin. Okay. So, what's next? Um, I will make a motion to accept the. Uh, I don't. Oh, let's see. Town administrative performance review as okay. presented. Okay, second that. I'll second that motion, Mr. Gavin made. All those in favor of accepting the review? Okay. <coughs> We're on that topic, I think there are a few questions on that. Uh, it's helpful to have a back. <coughs> it's helpful to have um, sort of consistency in the questions from year to year because then you can see where growth and, and potential for improvement can be found. But I think there are some questions, and Kevin, you might be better qualified to answer this where I find it difficult to give any grade because uh, sure. yeah. you know, it, it either it does it isn't really something that you do anymore for various circumstances or it's just so I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for us to while keeping the same framework to sort of redraft that uh, so that it's um, more germane to really getting directly to the point on the issues that we want to talk about. Not Nothing to talk about tonight, but something maybe we want to have uh, as a as a goal. <laughs> That's it. I think the... Oh, it's oh, yeah. Is that something to consider? But I don't know if you if there's anything that's um, not uh, quantifiable by the number system used, and I don't know how long this number system's been in use, particularly or in particular. But there's certainly at the end of each section when you fill it out, you know, comments and, and um, space for comments and written comments and all that. Right. Um, that said, I don't know if that addresses that without revamping this form, and I don't know. You know, I don't know where this form came from or who made it up. I think so. it was created back with either Sally or shortly before Sally. <coughs> yeah. We should probably we should probably have to look and see what the, you know, what what does the charter say about how it has to be done, and, and then if we want to attempt to um, 
re reword or rework it, we'll, we'll address that issue. We have almost a full year. So we can I don't think do the charter. The I don't think the charter addresses the actual format at all. It's really just just the fact that we have an obligation to give a uh, an annual review. Did you actually correct. get a chance to read your review? No. Good. I heard it tonight. Thank you. you. Want me to read it again? Uh, you've seen it before, that haven't I you? No, he didn't send it to me. Ah. Uh, Bill didn't send it to me. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah. Here it is. The very own copy. I have extra. We don't need to do that. It just says it needs to be made available to the public. Oh, okay. Just lessen that load of paper a little bit. Yeah, thanks. All right. Um, so now we go into um, town administrators. Yeah, just a few EDU. things. Yeah, EDU. A few things under economic development. Um, uh, actually, Andrew had a meeting with a local property developer. Uh, who's expressed some interest in some multiple um, parcels downtown. Uh, nothing that's come to any fruition, but at least it's resulted in uh, showing that there is interest. Um, there is some developers out there that are looking at it. Um, there's improvement in the market, and uh, you know, there, there's interest in, uh, in doing things in the downtown. Um, is this private property, Kevin? Yes, yeah. A couple of the private uh, properties there on Main Street and the downtown area. Um, there's a meeting that's uh, scheduled with uh, Mill and Main leadership and uh, some of the downtown businesses and property owners uh, that's scheduled on for September 10th. Um, good opportunity for, this is sort of the first real meeting where there's been some direct dialogue with some of the uh, downtown uh, local businesses and the uh, Mill and Main folks. Um, I don't know where they're at. Are they s reaching out through MBA with that still? We're, we're the, hosting. Yeah. We have an extensive list of invites. Let's get one out, yeah. Property owners, business owners. Yep. Um, so it should be a good uh, opportunity to get some dialogue with uh, the established businesses that are already here and in town. Um, more to come with that. The staff attended a meeting on August 13th with the 495 uh, Metro West Partnership to discuss the expansion of the Fitchburg uh, commuter line. Uh, representative from uh, Mill and Main also attended um, this. The purpose of the meeting was to lay groundwork so that communities uh, on the Fitchburg line could coordinate for schedules, shuttles, and other future plans, and some overlap um, conversations with uh, with the Crosstown Connect uh, system and um, the desire for uh, getting folks uh, some reverse commuting focus, uh, particularly with that line. Um, a lot of discussion around uh, <coughs> focus around Littleton and Devons, um, but the, the general uh, conversation was good. Um, Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, uh, Matt Beaton, addressed the 495 Metro West uh, Partnerships Board of Directors meeting on August 11th, uh, provided several updates from the Baker Polito Cabinet's energy policies. Uh, one of the notable things is that the Cabinet has set a goal of um, doubling the Commonwealth solar generation uh, over the next decade. So they continue um, to put emphasis and stress on uh, solar development and we'll continue, I think we'll continue to see um, projects and uh, available funds to continue down that path and um, you know, under the, the green communities, uh, new leadership um, with a new director that they'll be bringing in as well. So it's still very much uh, a hot topic um, with the Polito. Um, with the uh, Baker Polito administration as much as it was with the Patrick administration who really was a uh, spearheaded the, um, the, the Commonwealth's uh, energy initiatives. Um, planning staff is preparing to issue an uh, RFQ request for qualifications for the redesign on the Veterans Memorial Park. And the purpose of the proposed redesign would be to increase the uh, park's viability as a pedestrian conduit between um, town destinations. Uh, um, I think you know, the ultimate goal would be looking at improving the pedestrian accessibility with uh, sort of the basin um, and the businesses that are on uh, Nason and Summer Street with the movie theater and um, look forward to seeing what comes out of that. If you recall, that was a um, CPC application uh, money to look to do that. So that'll be uh, rolling out in the very near future. Um, that's it. Okay. You have anything else? Yeah, one I forgot to mention earlier to Kevin is uh, Bill Nemser and I met with an organization called Soldier On, which uh, develops and manages veterans housing. 
-hmm. and they're interested in coming to Maynard. They like to do projects of 25 units or more, and we're hoping to connect them with uh, appropriate properties in town where that might be a good fit. Yep. Thanks. Kevin, quickly, um, can you confirm the that there was not an appeal on the uh, ABCC, to the ABCC on the liquor license hearing that we had a few weeks back? Uh, there was not. Um, we received that. Um, it was a letter what sent was the, out. the deadline on that? Beck, do you remember? On the notice, the certified mail. It, it's certainly beyond. Yeah. Yes. That. yeah. <coughs> My understanding was that it was. Yeah, I haven't seen it. it they yeah. actually called mm -hmm. us and told us they would not. Yeah. Yeah, that's my understanding. I don't know if that's supposed to be public news or whatever, but uh, I think it's. Sure, no, that, that's a um, valid point. Yeah, Which so license? The one that was for the Aitens. Yeah, the Leo license. So that they did not appeal. Movie theater. <laughs> and the Taste of India did not appeal either. That's correct. That that one was the one that we. Um, gave out tonight. Gave out this evening. So to Mr. Tommel's question that's going to come up next time, we got them all back and they're in the town's possession. That's correct. The only one that um, is scheduled for a public auction uh, is the Maury's Tavern right. license, which I think is scheduled for September 1st um, in this room. A um, uh, question on that, Kevin. Uh, the, you're getting into some other issues I had for later. Um, <laughs> And what's the deal with that? Um, because in December, we renew licenses. If somebody comes in and purchases that license that doesn't own a building, doesn't own a place, doesn't own anything, we can refuse to, to re renew that license, correct? Yeah. Or can I mean, just anybody off the street come in and say, I want this license, and then they go to sell it, and if within, you know, they can sell it for to whomever they want to sell it. But they're still still subject to our renewal. That's correct. Yeah. Other than if the state owns it by DOR, then yeah, they don't have to use a location. Yeah, they were state, hold on. The state, it, but that's yeah, different. they have the right. I mean, if, if, if an applicant, yeah, they would still have to come before the local licensing authority. They're still and meet obligated all the same, to our to our liquor requirements. regulations Absolutely. before they get given them, even if they buy it at an auction. Correct. Got it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So the state essentially just wants that money for the back taxes. That's correct. Yeah. So they they've seized the license, um, and uh, it's by the Department of Revenue um, collection. And then they, you know, there's sometimes they'll forgive a certain amount. You know, they'll they'll count their losses and they'll take a portion of it. Other times, depending on the amount, they'll hold out. But there's a cost for them to hold a public hearing. They want to cover the state's cost plus they want to get back what's owed. So. You know they'll play it by ear depending on uh, my conversation with the the rep from Department of Revenue over the last several weeks has been that is they're seeing a desire in Maynard um, one that the fact that the town has requested additional licenses shows that there's a need um, and the recent activity at level that they've been watching has shown that there's an interest so they've decided to move forward with it, um, it it's fairly minimal I mean in the big scheme they, they've they were on a short leash uh, payment system with them all <coughs> along, um, and then they were they were not aware that they closed until they didn't receive payment themselves. So they've since have brought in that seizure uh, notice and will be auctioning it. Okay. Yep. Um, and then uh, as far as just while we're on the topic, the additional licenses. Um, have moved out of uh, third reading and they're now uh, the, re the home rule petition is now with the Senate um, so we should see that move somewhat quickly okay. um, so on that line the uh, civil service um, bill has moved out of um, steering so it left public uh, service he has moved out of steering and that's now in with uh, third review of the house so now that's at that point it should move along fairly quickly um, there's a conversation with rep Hogan that you know we, we don't they're apprehensive to give us time you know as far as a, 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 a date but they it's very much on their radar and they're pushing it um, so once it passes through the house then that would move on to um, the Senate piece as well so but it, it should move along quicker now um, 
uh, Maynard is uh, currently providing van service to uh, open tables, new temporary location in Sudbury at the United Methodist Church. Uh, open table is uh, paying for that added cost of the van driver and uh, et cetera, it's costs related to the van service. But that we are, uh, at least in this um, point in time, providing temporary uh, transportation services over there so residents of Maynard can access open table. And um, tonight actually is their first dinner since leaving the mill. So August 18th is their first dinner at the uh, new temporary uh, location. Um, they are still continuing to look for a permanent solution, but um, that, that's where they will be providing meals uh, until such time. Um, 18 contractors picked up bid documents for the Coolidge School roof project. Uh, five were submitted and one has been selected, DP Kearney Construction, um, who actually was uh, the most responsive bidder, but um, one of the only, I think the only one that showed up for a site uh, out of the five that submitted for a site walkthrough and actually ended up being the, uh, the cheapest um, at a little over 67,000. Um, so that's in line with uh, the funding requested and uh, we'll address the, uh, the w issues with the roof and uh, additional repairs that were needed um, w within the school. When will they start that? Um, I don't, we they're preparing the uh, actual contract documents. Um, we'll have to have your signature on it because of the value um, and we'll award it. I think, did Aaron give you an idea when that was gonna, uh, somewhere in the well next? The, the RFP requested or required that they finish uh, by the end of October. Yeah. The actual start date will probably be three weeks or so from date of contract. Yeah. I was just finalizing the uh, contract on our end um, to provide. <coughs> but so that's moving forward. Um, just a thought, perhaps when that work starts up there, we let the neighbors know to expect maybe they, I don't know if they'll be banging or whatever, but just so they know that there will be some work going on. Yeah, so. well, there'll definitely be some noise um you know we can we can do a better we'll definitely uh give an update to the community as best we can um collective bargaining on the, on that front the custodial group contract uh which the on the town side we were involved with this round as far as sitting in on negotiations and providing input um and uh, that's going to school committee at the end of august at the at the um, meeting in the end of this month um, for ratification. The public safety dispatch is still ongoing. There was a meeting um, this afternoon. We're getting very close to wrapping that up. Um, we should have uh, that resolved uh, potentially in September. Um, the fire union also would continue to uh, meet. We have a meeting that's scheduled for September 1st and hoping that that's getting closer to um, the wrapping up. So we could potentially by the end of uh, next month, um, ideally uh, we could have those two agreements uh, ratified. Um, let's see. We're getting there. Uh, one quick question. Where are you uh, with the chief's uh, discussion with the chief and his comments? Yeah, that will be um, in an executive session for uh, next month as well. Him and I have a, <coughs> we've gone back and forth a little bit. We have a sit down meeting scheduled for <coughs> Monday or Tuesday um, to get you know further discussion points. So. We should have something um, possibly by our, our uh, next meeting, first meeting in September, um, second meeting in September, the latest, at least for a first kind of round. That was my, uh, my goal. Um, well, so fire station designer selection, there was 10 firms that submitted for that, uh, architectural firms. Three finalists were interviewed out of that 10, and um, Dorr and Whittier, has been selected. Uh, the cost is approximately $70,000. Um, there's a, a 10 to 12 week process and we should have a solid estimated project cost by early November. Um, it would be a, a good firm, a good proposal and um, the review committee and, and which the chief was a, a big part of. Uh, How much was allocated on that? For 90? 90? 90, yeah, 90, 90, what? 90,000. Yeah, 90,000. There may be some additional costs for things like uh, boring into the ground to understand that it can support a new structure. Yeah. That would be outside the scope of the design. It's, it's certainly in line with 
the, the anticipated funding needs. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that specifically later. But just as a public update, um, they've been selected. We'll same thing on that end, uh, preparing and finalizing a contract, and uh, we'll get that going. And we have a 10 to 12 week uh, process time on on their end. So. Hopefully by early November time frame, we'll have uh, an idea for the fire station. That's all I have. Updates. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when we're going to schedule a hearing for the water and sewer rates? Yes. So we have to do an advertising. We have to post it and advertising everything. Yeah, um, I'd li I'd like to do it for September fifteenth meeting, so we can get it posted, advertised uh, properly. If we do it for the fifteenth, set the rates, the commitments on the uh, about to go out into Softright, updating it the next day on the sixteenth. For the eighteenth, that'll be um, right in line with uh, with uh, October one. Okay. for the quarter so that's kind of the last sort of <coughs> drop dead date for uh to get it in for the, the next quarter if you're good with that we'll move forward with um yeah. posting uh no, hearing I'm, notices and i'm good with that it just we have all the information so we should yeah start the process okay. and adam that's the only that was the only question i had is chair's report so um, board member reports, Tim? Yes, I did a little review of the charter and I didn't see anything about non-elected committee members and how to fill a vacancy. I know there's a special section for board of selectmen filling in for elected officials. Is there a same policy that applies to those who are just sworn in? I mean, we're at a need right now for committee members and is there any way we can step in and place a vote every now and then legally uh no I can't no um yeah and the part you're referencing is um particularly with elected officials was similar to like what we had to do with uh, the school committee vacancy um I'll look we more have, into we have my position that's been vacant on the CPC since I joined the board of right. selectmen and doesn't seem like we're filling it anytime soon. We have trouble meeting quorum. Cycle time's coming up. Is there any way I can cast a vote or is that an issue? Yeah, I think I think it will be an issue. But I'll uh, I'll get I can I'll make it for well, a clarification. If just as a question, is there a prohibition on for example the board has uh, at large appointments that we can make? We're limited from making an at-large appointment of one of our own members to one of those boards. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I will confirm that um, tomorrow. But that's my understanding that yeah, you can't ap appoint uh, somebody to serve in that capacity as an elected official. Be appointed to another board. Well, then a little PSA to those who are tuning in at home. Yeah. Um, really need really need people to step up. Five of us have vacancies on their boards, and we would greatly appreciate those who would like to serve to step up and fill a vacancy, maybe learn something, and help me or move forward. So please get in contact with one of us. Thank you. I did receive uh, an email from uh, a, a new, fairly new resident um, that moved to town that's looking to get involved um, that I received yesterday afternoon. It's on my list to reach out to. Um, we can also, you know, push it out again through... Um, the mechanisms to put you know put it at the top of the website and through uh, my site as well just that there's still interest um, we, st we have a need for an alternate uh, zoning board ZBA member as well still um, there's a couple of, of those other ones um, there's a uh, retirement board um, selectman appointment position um, so there is a few yeah that's all I got Step up. We, wel we welcome you. Okay. David? Uh, you'll, you'll cover the uh, cigarette thing? Yeah, actually, we, yes. So I have, uh, let's quickly check my list. 
I'm good. Okay, Terrence. Uh, just going back to the, uh, I don't want to put on Cumberland Farms, but uh, mm -hmm. a little update. <coughs> so apparently it's the fuel trucks that are causing the major problem there. From, a, from a, So I don't know if there's some special time that the fuel trucks can show up and, and unload because of the strange parts of the land there actually I mean, it's an awkward spot for right. it in there anyway but I guess it's they're idling because they have to stay going the whole time while they're pumping the fuel out mm -hmm. plus the fact that they're backing up into that small little space and, <coughs> um, and it's been happening yeah I, I figured it was the fuel truck yeah. but as I've seen the other ones are usually a little bit later and they disrupt traffic they know the fuel guys are in there usually early let me let me uh, see what what's there that in order to pump, they have to have the PTO engaged, and they have to have the motor running. So exactly, there's, there's no way. They're running. outside. I mean, th those type of vehicles are excluded from the mass idling laws. Um, specifically, that's one. Technically, of the they're not because they're not idling. They're they're actually operating a piece of the, the equipment rather than idle sitting idle. Yeah. But the problem is that it's off hours because they they come in and they come at you know odd hours, so they're not in their customer's way. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes it even more um, necessary in that location, um, just because it gets, it, it's a tough lot to begin with, but. Just so I understand the issue, Terrence, there's some complaints from neighbors yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, people live directly across the street. Yeah. Of the noise, you know, at that time, um, with the truck's uh, activity. Like early in the morning, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah even, even like, uh, well, we call it late at night, early morning, right? So, right. if you were younger, it would be late at night. <laughs> Yeah. Because we're older, it's yeah. early. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's well before the, you know, 6.30, 7 a.m. Yeah. timeline. And, yeah, it's early. You know, I, I think that's fairly common in the trade, you know, as far as uh, getting out there. Because like they, two in the morning once or they do a yeah. delivery, they take out the whole section. So, from a business uh, standpoint, you know, but I'll... I'll but I just I'll wanted to pass see. that on. That's, yeah, thank that's you. That's it. Thank you. Thank that's you. it. Jason? Um, I was notified, actually, as was David, uh, earlier this week about uh, trash cigarette butts all being thrown all over the street in front of a number of uh, businesses downtown. Um, I know I forwarded a message to DPW, DPW and, and to you, Kevin, uh, just, just inquiring as to what our street uh, sweeping schedule was. Uh, I know I got an answer from Chris. Uh, just before the meeting tonight, which is uh, we were doing it as needed uh, recently to accommodate vacations and manpower. Uh, and then also received a message today from my wife <coughs> from your blog, Mr. Town Administrator, that said there was actually a street sweeping to be undertaken tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. Thank you. Uh, I think the other thing I'd like to follow up on, though, and not for this evening, but going forward, is. Um, Whatever enforcement or that we, we may have, abilities we yeah. may have for people. I mean, uh, one of the places in particular has, has a receptacle I know. for cigarette boxes. We've gone yeah. down this road. I mean, I, I remember six years ago going down this road. It, it's very difficult because the minute you step off out of the front door of the, you know, the establishment as a patron, you're on a public way. Um, we've tried to, uh, particularly with Moore, we've tried to really encourage them to have their patrons go in the back of the building, um, you know, and, and to follow. We, we tried to push that they shouldn't be smoking in front of, directly in front of the door anyway, because the chances that it's a violation of the smoke-free workplace law with smoke migrating back into the business and the location of standing on the sidewalk, <coughs> it, it's, there's definitely migration. But it's extremely difficult to enforce because um, there's no town-wide public smoking policy or regulation. So, you know, once once they once that patron that's occupying that bar is out on the sidewalk, they have zero say as an establishment. Yeah, well, the, the, the place that's that's been really bad is employees. Yeah. Okay. That I have noticed. I, I the last few nights. Yeah. I've taken an opportunity to walk around downtown, and uh, it's employees that are out standing outside, and they're probably sole employees. They have to be near the shop. Right. And then they just throw them down on the corner. Yeah, that's good to know. I mean, I know um, Maury's in the PC over the years has been um, the biggest culprit and has been the biggest challenge. But um, 
Well, since we don't have any outdoor smoking policy in town, don't we have a littering policy? Isn't it a, yeah. a, a violation of the town's laws to litter? My I point was going to be... I would suggest that one or two fines to somebody for littering would solve the problem in some areas. I mean, if you're standing, whether it's in your doorway or on the sidewalk, and you're throwing your cigarette butt or your, your, your whatever into the street, I mean, that's a violation of the town laws. I mean, I can understand the parking clerk going home at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when I meet his read till 7, but, I mean, if you got people flinging cigarette butts all over town, penalize them. Hey, I, I've been pulled over because someone's thrown one out of the window of my automobile on, on, a, on a highway. So, you know, if we've got a problem where we're concerned as a town about, gee, when are we going to get our next street sweeping, and we know who's <coughs> throwing the cigarette, ups, cigarette butts on the ground, why don't we penalize them personally? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the first I I've heard of it. I mean, I don't know why we Five wouldn't, years. you know, kind of walk down, walk down the hall and tell the guys in the blue suits to maybe, <coughs> you know, sit out there and write a couple of violations. It's the, uh, the, 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 yeah. the two spots that were brought to our attention were specifically in front of Willie's, uh, Willie's. Yep. whatever it is down there, and then also uh, in front of the fire station. And that's not town residents. That's people sitting there at the red light finishing their cigarette and tossing it to the yeah. side and it's piles right there. It's actually better since the church closed. Since the church closed? Yeah. yeah. They had the, uh, <laughs> oh, the, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. Going on over there. yeah there, was, there was some smoking going on up front, yeah. but but by the same token, I don't I don't see why we would not make an effort to penalize the people who were littering the town. I could say even even I agree with you, but even without going to the the measure of that is I'll say it on T V. Willie's Phillies, I don't go in there because every time I drive by there, there's two employees out front smoking. And I lose my appetite just thinking about it walking in there. So you're losing revenue from at least one family. So you may want to think about that. And then we have that big piece of litter right next to McDonald's now that we should probably address at some point in one of these meetings. The tiger? The broken, it's a lion. It's a lion. It's a lion. A lion. It's a lion with a broken tail. And it's ridiculous. And it to me, it's there's a reason why the guy put it there. And... There ought to be some discussion with him about removing it from where it is and putting it somewhere else, like back where he found it. Well, let's kind of keep on what we were discussing. Well, let's clean up the cigarettes first, and then we'll get to the lion. But what? by the same token, I've had as you've had people come up to you about uh, cigarette butts. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm sitting in I'm sitting in Long Lake, Maine, and I'm getting pictures from people in town that I know. And here, you know, here, look at this. I'm like, what is this? I don't even know what it was. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that's that's what is that? Fair, Chris, but I mean, it's but, private uh, property. There's a big lawn ornament of some sort yeah. down at the, uh, in between McDonald's and the McDonald development that yeah. people are it's a little bit up in arms about right now. Oh, yeah. That was a school mascot. It would be if it was a tiger. It's a liger. Uh, perhaps it's, it's in honor of that, that lion or tiger, or whatever, that was killed. Yeah. Over in Africa Cecil. because it's right next to the dentist's office. So, you know, yeah. The dentist was the one accused. Anyway. Yeah, I think so. My point was what I brought it up for was more the, to Chris's point, was more the disposal rather yeah. than the outdoor smoking. Uh, I'm not a, I don't smoke, but I'm not a huge fan of banning smoking from everywhere for everyone. It's a little bit overreaching. So. Uh, that's it for me. Yeah, we'll we'll do what we can. We wouldn't it's have to keep banning smoking, but are we sure tough thing to be able to request cigars. that? Smoke cigars all day long, but I don't throw my my cigar butt on the on the on the front <laughs> of um, you know look optical as I'm driving down Main Street. I don't throw my cigar butt out the window. I have an ashtray. I have an ashtray at home. Right. I have. It's totally on board with you. I don't get. I you know I don't see why there's not a problem with it, but okay. We're done with the regular meeting, I guess. I guess um, motion to adjourn the regular meeting. Second. Actually, we don't do that. We, uh, we, we go ready. into executive session <laughs> and announce that we will not be returning. Okay. So. We'll get you all flustered from the lion. My, ruin my vacation, that damn lion. <coughs> Anyways. All right. <laughs> the executive session. So. Oh, it's on the old one. We are going to <coughs> convene an executive session Thanks. by roll call vote. Toodles. <laughs> Good. And we're not going to return. Not and we will not re reach and we will not reconvene. You have to just say what the purpose is. The purpose is the land purchase. Mm -hmm.